how in the ever-loving fuck is an event so sinful that it requires a fourth fucking video? I'm starting to regret ever taking this job as the Wrestling Sins guy now. But after nearly 400 episodes, I can't go anywhere right now. As much as I'd like to, I have an empire to entertain. Oh well, here we go. One more time. One year! 360 days! 360 days is not one year, Michael. That would be 365 days. 366 if it was on the leap year. The wolf came knocking at the door! Really? We just had to make a Three Little Pigs reference to this feud? My forehead is literally raw red from all the times I smacked it when I face palmed. Samoa Joe's, oh well, I lost. Now where's my paycheck face? Baron Corbin's, I can't wait to become the most despised employee in WWE history face. Baron, put it back. You know that the title doesn't belong to you. Put it back right now and be a good boy. Good lord, what the hell happened to Brock Lesnar's muscle? He's gaining a lot of fat. I guess that's what happens when you're spending a majority of your days lazing around on your fucking couch. Will not be for the faint of heart. Oh my god, how many times has somebody stated that a match with Brock Lesnar is not gonna be for the faint of heart? That's kinda obvious at this point. One of the most celebrated athletes. And by celebrated, I mean most hated because literally nobody wants him around anymore. The At this point, I'd rather see a fight between those boys arguing in the crowd and shoving each other than a match involving Brock Lesnar. An incredible reign. Michael Cole deserves five sins for even thinking that Brock Lesnar's 504-day title reign was incredible. Although, the only thing incredible about it was how he managed to get away with being absent for over 475 of those 504 days. I felt the wrath of that man. And I'm still amazed that Michael Cole landed perfectly from the F5 compared to many others who landed from it. Roman's eyes have not- Roman's eyes? Corey, Roman Reigns is not here anymore. Why else are we making a big deal about crowning a brand new Universal Champion tonight? Like a T-Rex versus a great white shark. Kind of a dumb comparison if you ask me. Ladies and gentlemen- A few minutes. Sad thing is, Paul Heyman is right when it comes to you'll hear this in just a few minutes, considering this match lasts only a few minutes. Note to self, anytime Paul Heyman states that something he says is going to be a spoiler, believe that. Defending! 504 days with only 10 title defenses only prove that Brock Lesnar does pretty much everything except defend his title, and I am believing that to be the same case about his next title reign. Oh! Oh Fucking piece of shit deserves the limit of 100 sins. And also, you know what? I fucking had it with these stupid rules. I'm announcing right now that from this point forward on these videos, there will be no more limits as to how many sins can be added or subtracted. All the rules of that have officially been thrown out the window. Maybe that was what I needed to do to prevent the sin counter from blowing up all the time. No holds barred, bitches! Brock Lesnar's best suited to represent oh, money- Go fuck yourself. No oh, one survives too. Unless you're Roman Reigns, who has survived five FIs before succumbing to the sixth one earlier this year at WrestleMania. Ah, uh, Brock Lesnar's voice cracked. Also, a further 50 sins are being added because this match is literally nothing but F5s and a single big boot. The moment you can literally recite every move that happens is the moment you know the match was short and disgusting at the same time. Has anybody else noticed that Brock's legs are literally as pale as Sheamus's? I was so angry that when I looked back up at the TV, I thought Braun Strowman was facing Sheamus for a second. And now Strowman oh my God. As much as it kills me on the inside, here's a sin off for that cool F5 to the outside of the ring. Surprised Brock hasn't done that more often in his Royal Rumble appearances. The fact that a vacated championship can change hands on a count out is bullshit. Even if there is no title holder, the title should still only be won by pinfall or submission. All the way to the outside to the floor. That has never been done. Uh, what about the time Brock did that to Matt Hardy 15 years ago at the Royal Rumble, Corey? Yep, I remember that. That's how he eliminated Matt that year. An F5 to the floor. And Brock Lesnar! Brock Lesnar is again representing Monday Night Raw. That pathetic douchebag isn't representing shit, Michael. Stop lying to us. But you have no choice but to accept it. Never, 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 never. I will never accept Brock's universal title victory. Knowing full well, he's just going to abduct it once again. Hell, I bet none of my optimistic empire will accept this. It's also a spit into the face of everything Roman Reigns stood for. And that headline is this. This is the first time I'm sending the pyrotechnics. Why the fuck are we celebrating something that doesn't deserve any celebration? Before I blow up again, I'm gonna skip through this and continue to the next segment. WWE and their weird habit of promoting other pay-per-view matches during an unrelated pay-per-view event. After the infuriating result of the Universal title match, you'd think that the finals of the World Cup tournament would make us feel a little better. Oh, how the nightmare has only begun. Shane McMahon! 
Okay, from this point forward, if any person in authority power comes out to the ring for an upcoming match, don't ever trust what they're going to do. Or he's not going to have a show to go to. Shane McMahon put in the ruling that if any wrestler from SmackDown lost this World Cup, they'd be fired. First of all, that's really pathetic if you think about it. Also, since Shane entered himself into the match taking the Miz's place, if he had lost, would he fire himself? That would actually have been hilarious to see. Now we got Shane and Baron arguing. No doubt beginning the hype to Survivor Series, but I am too fucking pissed off at Baron to give a shit. And I'm about to be pissed off at Shane too. Who would have thought that authority figures would ruin this otherwise decent show? It was decent, and then authority figures ruined everything. Look at my goddamn sin counter and there's your proof. Previously on Crown Jewel. Also nearly two minutes of looking at flashbacks of the Miz's matches and Dolph Ziggler's matches. Not to be totally honest. If the reason why Dolph's record scratching sound effect is to cut off the entrance music for his opponents, then how come it took literally forever for that to happen the previous two times? You said that Miz has nothing to worry about. I'm unbiased. Ha ha, you're funny, Corey. You expect any of us to believe that junk? Introducing first! Okay, so for their first match, Greg Hamilton listed off their accomplishments and introduced them before their music hit. Then the second time, he announced them to the ring during the entrance. Now for the third match, we're introducing them when they're already in the ring. I'm sensing a pattern here. The referee demands that Drew McIntyre be ejected from ringside now, but the other referees didn't do shit about it the first two times Dolph competed tonight. Sure, this is totally not suspicious. Dolph Ziggler on an even- Pre-match assault. Also attacking from behind. Although it's the first time I've seen a villain attacking another villain from behind. I'm pretty sure it's happened before, but I'm too exhausted to say anything about it. The referee still hasn't called for the bell to begin the matchup. The more I hear the commentator stating the obvious, the more I want to kick this event right in its crown jewels. Yeah, yeah, I heard what I said. Thanks. I bet the Miz regrets ever attacking Dolph in the first place. Also, come on Miz, can't you go through one big match without attacking someone from behind? In some ways, this is your fault. Oh no, the Miz is injured, possibly tore up his knee and he needs help. Hey, by the way, Crown Jewel is the number one trend worldwide, so fuck you two injuries. <laughs> Am I the only one who heard Miz say mother as if he was calling out to his mother when he got hurt? Seeing the Miz injured and unable to compete caused Shane to activate the McMahon's special ability. When their superstar is destroyed, a McMahon is automatically summoned to the field and can attack their opponent directly, winning the duel. See? I'm losing my mind. I'm on part four and I'm making Yu-Gi-Oh references again. Never been injured? Never been injured? Well, first time for everything. Therefore, therefore your winner by four. After being told to shut up by Shane, Greg decides to troll with him for a while by announcing Dolph as the winner by forfeit. I'm gonna take his place. Giving this another 50 cents because how the hell is this legal for Shane McMahon to compete in The Miz's place? The only reason I would be okay with this is if Shane was competing as a representative of The Miz. That way, if he won, The Miz would still win the cup. But I guess not. Also, why not just declare this a forfeit victory for Dolph? Sure, that would be stupid, but at this point, nothing could defeat the stupidity of Shane McMahon taking The Miz's spot. Also, also, if that wouldn't work, then why not just have the runner-up Rey Mysterio compete against Dolph in the finals? He was the last person The Miz defeated to qualify, so why the fuck not? Determine the best in the world! The finals- Are you seriously kidding me right now? The referee counts to four, Shane ignores him, which means Shane should be disqualified. Dolph Ziggler is the winner of the World Cup at this moment, and yet he's not. Fuck. I've had enough of seeing referees fail miserably at their jobs. How is this even right? Michael Cole would be great at CinemaSins 2 expansion. That's what I'm saying. Right now, this is... And then... The referee saw Baron put his hands on Shane and didn't call for the disqualification. Once again, fucking up his job. Oh, come on now! This should have happened before the Universal title match took place. <laughs> the fans think that a pathetic move like this by Shane is awesome. Never thought I'd say that before. Don't hate me for that, please. I just don't understand. All the wrestlers worked their asses out to qualify for this tournament, competing multiple times in one night, all just to lose to someone who we didn't even think was in the damn arena. And the very thought of Shane McMahon being known as the best in the world is a million times sinful. I am just about done with this pathetic show. The Smackdown. The technicians thought about showing one camera view before showing another. Both of the shots on the coast to coast were good in my opinion, so why the change? We at least got an action pack. Action pack my ass. This match exists. Also, after what went down with the Universal title match and the World Cup Finals, I completely forgot about this match's existence. Then again, this wasn't memorable to begin with and will most likely be forgotten about anyway. Also, also, NO ONE ASKED FOR THIS! Also, 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 no comedy from D-Generation X is what you call an absolute boring reunion. Like seriously, not one single funny thing that made DX famous and popular in the first place happen. If you're gonna do nostalgia acts, do it right! 
Triple H believes that defeating The Undertaker at the Super Showdown event was enough to make it to the summit of the mountain he was already on in the first place. Like this feud's random existence, this storyline makes zero sense. I've stayed retired out of respect. Traitor! A respect that never existed! It did so exist. Shawn Michaels is just making up excuses to get back into the ring despite everything he promised. Degeneration X is ready! And then they're gone, just like that, as if the whole thing never existed. Can't survive Brothers of Destruction. Even though almost everybody who's ever faced the Brothers of Destruction have survived them. Never rest in peace. So, first The Undertaker says that D-Generation X will rest in peace, now he's saying they'll never rest in peace. Make up your mind, are they gonna rest in peace or not? D-Generation X did everything in their entrance, except the crotch chop pyrotechnics blast, and with a lot of pyro exploding tonight, this is a letdown. Apparently, Shawn Michaels calling for Michael Cole's name triggered Kane's pilot to erupt. Michael's name must have some magical powers. No joke, The Undertaker's gong goes off so many times. Honestly, felt like he was trolling the audience for a while before finally playing his music. Should have had somebody guide me inside the ring. I can't see shit with this hood blocking my vision. We've never witnessed this. If time went back 10 years or so, witnessing this match would no doubt be one of the best matches ever. In today's day and age, and I emphasize the word age, this is embarrassing. The Undertaker refusing to let Hunter enter the ring. Can we at least get this match over with since it's happening? Boring stare downs. I should have known this was gonna happen. WRESTLE! Or at least try to. I can understand the holy shit chance because I still say that every time I see Shawn Michaels with no hair whatsoever. It takes nearly two fucking minutes before either of these two even punch each other in this tag team match. And what's worse is that the pace of this match remains the same as it was when they were just staring at each other. I don't know if that was the wisest decision. Hunter begging for mercy after hitting one single punch on Kane. <laughs> I want to erase this match from the existence of my memory, but that was funny as hell. Hunter was wasting all the time in the world to do a crotch job and Kane gave him what he deserved for wasting time. I'll remove one sin despite the fact that it's not even going to put a dent in this humongous sin counter. Although, sadly, I'm putting that sin back because Kane didn't even connect with that punch at all. He has magical abilities, so I shouldn't be surprised anyway. No way it's gonna happen. Hunter lifted himself into the air before Kane could even hit the clothesline. First a punch that didn't even connect, and now a too early reaction. I am not surprised about this, honestly. Kane now follows up in the corner, down- The fuck was that? The drunk drop? Well, did you talk to Sean- Hunter clearly poked Kane in the neck, which somehow caused his eyes to hurt. Now we're defying logic. I'm finding sins for almost every damn move here. Concerned about this match tonight, because he's coming out of her- Hunter teased tagging in Sean, spun Kane around in a circle, and then teased the crowd again. Stop teasing that you're gonna tag in Sean, just tag him in already. Against the Kane and- The Kane? Since when did Kane ever start referring to himself as the Kane? The top rope, where he made much of it. Sean is finally tagged in and starts wrestling for the first time in eight and a half years. And the first thing he does is the world's slowest arm wrench. I bet Kane was thinking, the hell is this guy doing? I'm not even being phased by this. Bring Rust out of the equation. Wrong. For a second, nearly paid for What a devastating knife edge chopped to the air. Ropes up over the top, wait for the sunset flip. Sean has tried that move for years to wrestlers as big as Kane, and they failed 100% of the time. Couldn't come up with a strategy to actually make it work this time? Once upon a time, Shawn Michaels vs. The Undertaker was the greatest match to ever happen in WWE history. That doesn't mean it's gonna be the same thing in the present day. Also, I would get excited at seeing these two wrestle each other, but I still can't get over the absence of Shawn's hair. I'm sorry, there are just some people that don't look good with no hair. Come on, that uppercut was nowhere near Hunter's head. And no, I'm not cutting them some slack because of their old age. If they're competing, they are all prone for the sins. That's how this works, no matter who it is. Michaels are legal. Oh, oh. Oh. What a shame that this vintage move from Sean couldn't be completed. And Triple H. Oh. I guess I will never know why Hunter even does that, especially when he wasn't thrown that hard into the corner. I know that Kane and The Undertaker can be intimidating, but the referee isn't even trying to tell Kane to leave the ring since he is not the legal man at this moment. As you can see, Hunter ripped apart his pectoral muscle, so I at least give him credit for finishing this match despite the injury, even though I'm not surprised. Old school to the heartbreak! Ugh, the way Sean randomly leaped into the air upon getting hit with old school made me cringe really bad. That D-Generation X means! That D-Generation X means? The hell is that supposed to mean? Tick taking apart the game! Tick taking apart the game. How does one tick take their opponent in the match? We got a new mystery on our hands. The Brothers of Destruction want to play! 
I'm throwing in three additional sins because even if Hunter didn't move out of the way, Kane would have never landed on him. This match is really hard to watch. Kane, a down! Sorry, but I don't find it believable that a small punch was enough to send Undertaker sailing to the floor from the apron. Oh! Sean nearly tripped and Kane leaped a little too early from that suplex. I'm barely looking at the screen and can easily call the sins from here. Two of them. Are we gonna see what I think we're gonna see? Sean is climbing to the top rope, Kane is down, and Sean is known for doing his vintage elbow drops. So, duh, of course we're gonna see what you think we're gonna see, Corey. Tune it up the band! Sean isn't tuning up the band because he's not even moving, much less tapping his foot on the ground. At the super kick by Michaels! Michael Cole absolutely refusing to refer to that super kick as sweet chin music, you asshole. We can clearly hear Sean discussing strategies with the referee. Shut up and talk quietly so the microphones can't pick it up. Undertaker sent Sean Ray. Oh come on, just finish the match already. What's the point in throwing Sean outside the ring when it's not a no disqualification tag team match? Uh oh. Apparently, The Undertaker simply disassembling the announce table, something seen almost every other week when other wrestlers do it, qualifies as a holy shit moment. What the fuck? And now Kane! Oh my god, how many times is someone gonna look to do some damage only to just hesitate and wait for his opponent to do something? Reasons like that is why this is one of the most embarrassing main events I've ever seen involving these two legendary teams. Sure, let's go this way. Meanwhile, I will send you this way, which is the same way I do to everyone else. Also, more conversations during matches. Here's 20 cents. That was fucking pathetic and sad. Hunter didn't even counter the Undertaker who threw himself into the barricade for virtually no reason at all. Uh oh my god! Hunter had to jump twice before Kane lifted him up for the choke slam. How much longer is this pain gonna last? Also, the Arabic announce table was disassembled, but it was the American announce table that was ultimately destroyed in the end. I guess the Brothers of Destruction realized the Spanish announce table wasn't at this event. This is incredible! Bullshit, it's not. The Undertaker's leg drop was clearly connected on Sean's neck, not his chest, Michael. There are too many botches in the ring, we don't want more botches on commentary too. Yeah, I'm staring right into your face instead of throwing Sean back into the ring to defeat him. Just roll with it. You guys are finished! The words of the phenom! The Undertaker didn't even say anything to Hunter. All he did was look at him. That was it. I didn't hear him say anything. How did Michael? A Michael's who kick! Undertaker again! Undertaker pins Sean, who kicks out. So he figures pinning him again without doing any more damage will do the trick. Newsflash, that doesn't usually work. It's almost as if they're, they're enjoying this. It's not as if Kane and the Undertaker are enjoying this. They actually are enjoying this. It'd be stupid if they weren't, to be honest. He wanted to be 100%. He didn't want to lose his step. Too late for that. It's no fault of anybody's, except the Brothers of Destruction. Actually, it's Sean's own fault because he's the one who decided to come out of retirement and ruin his story's conclusion for pathetic reasons. That he returned to this grand stage. How in the ever-loving fuck is a random glorified house show with no meaning to it qualifying as a grand stage? That deserves an extra 10 cents. Shawn Michaels is down. And Christian Miracle is down. Oh wait, he's just asleep because of how boring this event is. Never mind, carry on. The moment you see Sean taking a nap on the ring apron is the moment you know that this was a bad idea from the start. Except for those who knew this was a bad idea even before it happened, which is pretty much almost everyone. Right to the ribs! Maybe I underestimated Sean. His punches are so powerful that he accidentally knocked the mask off a of cane. And oh my god, you're telling me that Kane is Glenn Jacobs? It's the mayor of Knoxville County! Exposed! Jesus fucking Christ, we fucking care about your health! I don't give a crap if anybody says just let him do this. Excuse me for not wanting Sean to accidentally cause severe injury or possible death as he landed on his fucking face in that exchange. Also, Sean missed Undertaker completely, who fell just for the joy of falling down. Is he smiling? Clearly not. Renee doesn't realize that Sean isn't smiling. He's grimacing in pain. Just like earlier in part three, when Renee confused Dolph Ziggler's confidence with frustration, Renee confused pain grimaces with smiling. Kane was watching Hunter even before he entered the ring and still didn't take advantage of that opportunity. My question is, what the hell is wrong with all these veterans? Ed Hunter kicks Undertaker, who doesn't even react to it at all. Just calm down, Christian. We're almost done. We're almost done with this crap. Blocks the choke slam. What the fuck is wrong with everybody? Wrestler is accidentally knocked into his own partner cliche. Neither Kane nor Sean is the legal participant and once again the referee doesn't give two fucks about the rules. Also, almost a full minute of watching wrestlers rest in the ring. 
This is an incredible performance. Yeah, if you're a fan of watching past their prime wrestlers struggle to even do a move properly or set up a move properly. Super it's called Sweet Chin Music, you fucking asshole. With a the most fucked up, embarrassing, and botched pedigree of all time deserves 50 sins because whether or not Hunter's pectoral muscle was ripped, Kane is also to blame for this as well. It's situations like this while you stop trying to make the wrestlers of yesterday main event pay-per-view events, giving the middle finger to those who deserve it. I am fucking done with this event finally, and I never want to see or hear about this disgraceful show ever again.